Hello everybody, this is the Empirical Audio File. Welcome to my channel. You know, I was thinking of something that was a little weird, and I thought to myself, like a company like Klipsch, why, why is it they don't make speakers that go lower and lower for your bass? A lot of people like bass, and it's something that people want. And we hear about people buying speakers, uh, very expensive speakers, and they say, oh, it needs a subwoofer. And it seems to be people push something like a subwoofer all the time on speakers. But let's take clips, for example, like the Los Scalas. A lot of people complain, oh, their, their bass isn't that low. And so I started thinking about that. Hmm. Company's been around a long time. And I like the Los Scalas. And people say, well, they don't go that low. But the corner horns do go lower. But... I, I start thinking, what's going on here? But so I went and I got an app for my phone that uh, decibel meter. I have a decibel meter that I use from uh, Radio Shack, and it tells you how loud something is at the position you're sitting at. But this one works off of your phone. But it also tells you this decibel meter of um, how not only loud you're listening to something at the position you're at, but also the frequency response. So if it's playing, you know, 8,000 kilohertz, it will actually show you 8,000 kilohertz, you know, or it will show you, you know, if you're playing bass 80, you know, hertz, it will show you 80 hertz you're, you're listening to. And I thought, oh, that's pretty good. Now, barring the accuracy of it, I don't know. What you're looking for is a constant. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter if uh, people would say, well, they're not very accurate. But that's not what we're looking for here. We're looking for a constant. And it doesn't matter. It's just like a, a micrometer. If a micrometer isn't accurate, you can uh, get something that is, let's say, a, a gauge pin that's 500 thousands and measure it. And if it's 10 thousands off, so what? It's not accurate. But if it's 10 thousandths off, then everything you measure, you would go plus or minus the 10 thousandths it's off. So what if it's not accurate? It's, it, once you find out, it's a constant is what we're kind of looking for, if you know what I mean. So on this app, whether it's accurate or not, you could see a constant. So I thought, well, let me see something. Now, I know we have surround sound systems, right? And for your movies, and of course, you want low bass. You got to, you know, that's part of the ambience of the movie. You know, rumbling and, and crashing and the, and the booming. And uh, yeah, we love it. It's part of the ambience of watching the movie. But when it comes to music, things are a little different. Because does music really need that low, low, low bass? And I noticed uh, in all the years I've been reading like Stereophile or Absolute Sound, nothing makes Class A unless it's a full range speaker, 20 to 20,000. It's got to be 20 to 20,000. And I always thought about that, 20 to 20,000s. Why does it have to go that low? You know what I mean? Is there anything on musical CDs that are going down to 20,000 hertz? You know, so... I started getting some CDs out and hundreds of them. And I'm thinking, okay, what, what CDs do I think have a lot of bass? Start putting them on and using this app to find out because it will tell me where the bass is at. And uh, CDs that have a lot of bass and people have said, oh, it has a lot of bass. I was surprised how, how uh, the bass is only like 80 dB. 90 dB of, of, uh, of, or 90 hertz, I should say, or 80 hertz, you know, of the bass, only going down to there. Like, uh, like for example, this Kodo Drummers of the plant, Japan, you know, it uses a big, huge drum, six foot in diameter they're beating on. You would think the bass would go down real low, but uh, it doesn't really. 80, 90 Hertz, that's it. Hmm. 
So I start putting more CDs on and, and different CDs. How low does any of these CDs go with bass? Well, the lowest CD I found, which after a few hundred, I, I gave up because I have thousands of CDs. Uh, the lowest one I found that went down to about 45 to 47 hertz was this Casper CD. And I know it goes real, real low because you can hear it, you know, being presented off of the Altex. You can hear that low, low bass of this CD, which is, which is, I thought, wow, you don't really hear bass that low. Well, it's showing on the meter that the bass to this is going all the way down to 45 to 47 hertz. That is the lowest of all the CDs I own that a CD went out of hundreds and hundreds of CDs that I kept thinking had low bass. That one had the lowest down to 45, 47 hertz. And that may explain why some manufacturer like Clips doesn't worry about making speakers going down to 30 hertz or something like that. In music, there's nothing there. Nobody, nobody presents out of the hundreds that I tested, there was no bass going down to 40 or 35 or 30 hertz. There was nothing. There's, there's no CD I have that's made to go the base as low as that. Nothing. The, the only thing that came close was this soundtrack from Casper, where it has a tin pan drum in the background, and you can tell it's very, very low, because I use this to demonstrate to people low bass. But none of the other CDs, uh, like I said, Kodo Drummers of Japan, none of them, have. they all have bass, but not as low as that. And then I started thinking, there's a difference between low bass and there's a difference between impact of bass. Okay. And I'm thinking to myself, if you want to check out for low bass, you go buy a test CD from Stereophile, Chesky makes them, test CDs. You put them on your system and it'll go through the whole wave of the tones, and you can tell then on your speakers how low they'll go before they drop off. And you can use a decibel meter to see them drop off, how many dB they're dropping off. And you can test out your speakers and see how low the bass really goes on your speakers. But music doesn't have anything down in those lower registers. It's, at least from what I saw, I mean, if you... If you're watching this video and you can think of a CD or something that has very, very low bass, let me know. You know, I'll try it out with this new decibel meter. But uh, that, like I said, 45, 47 hertz was the lowest. But there was one thing is impact. Now, one thing you don't get with a small speaker that's only seven inches in diameter, for example, is you don't get impact. You get you get decent presentation, which we'll all admit to, but to equal that of a big 15-inch woofer, 18-inch woofer, to get that impact, to get the size and the and the impact. That's that's one thing that when you play bass, you need that impact. It just can't be loud is what I'm saying. It has to have an impact to it. So if you're listening to something, let's say the loudest it's playing is 80 or 85 dB, and that's the loudest. That's where it will peak out at. Um, you need that impact of the bass. And maybe that's why people say, oh, these speakers lack bass. Maybe they don't lack bass. Maybe they only lack impact, not bass. Because like I said, the lowest CD I had was about 45, 47 dB. That's it. And that was only one CD out of 100 that I tested. And you can definitely hear how low that bass is. And I've heard other people do reviews of CDs, I'm sure you have, where they said, oh, it has very low bass. I have some of those CDs. They recommended them. 
No, they none, nothing was lower than that soundtrack from Casper. Nothing was lower than that. That was the lowest of any CD I could bring out that would hit that register of at least 45 to 47 hertz. Nothing went that low. They don't. I'm surprised a lot of these drum wax, they're in maybe 80, 90 hertz range, really. And a lot of your range is up in the middle. And these speakers cross over, they're at 800 hertz. And from 800 hertz on up, it's the horn. So I took the meter and I tested high frequency. and But I put the meter up to the uh, tweeter, the super tweeter. And I was hitting some high frequencies as high as 10,000 kilohertz. Okay, the meter was showing me that, boom, you know, but this was for very, very short burst, you know, where you would hit 8,000 or 10,000 kilohertz that it was showing on the meter, which would be very high. And that was showing off the super tweeter that I have, which I've done videos about. So I knew the super tweeter was presenting frequencies up to 10,000, at least from what I could see of my CDs. I didn't try every CD for high frequencies. I was basically worried about the low. And uh, the meter showed off the super tweeter over 10,000 kilohertz, it was still playing. The super tweeter was. Whether you can hear that, well, that's another story. But I know the super tweeter is presenting it because it said eight to 10,000 hertz. It's showing it, peaking up there. So I was wondering that, is this something we're geared to or taught to, that you need speakers that got to go super, super low? Because there's no music there and super, super low frequencies. They're good for, like I said, surround sound for your TV set. But music-wise, to hit something that low of 45 hertz, it's out of hundreds and hundreds of CDs. That, that was the only CD that did it. One CD out of hundreds could go that low. Uh, I think... I think we make much to do about nothing when it comes to when these reviewers say, oh, it needs a subwoofer. Well, maybe the subwoofer adds impact. Maybe the speaker is going as low as what's on your CDs. After all, they're not telling you the music they listen to, how low did it go? You ever notice that with these reviewers? They never tell you that, oh, I played such and such song or such and such music, and it goes all the way down, I know for a fact, down to 40 hertz, let's say. And the speaker couldn't do it. They just say, oh, oh, it definitely needs a subwoofer. Maybe they're missing impact. Because that's the only thing I can think of. Because maybe that's why clips, you know, don't doesn't worry about making speakers that can go that low. Maybe it's something that uh, that people want that uh, they're missing that impact. And so they say, well, it's got to go lower because maybe they're so used to surround sound, making that rumbling sound or, or rumbling out the couch, which you can feel on the Casper CD when it gets down to 45, 47 hertz, you can feel it going through the cement slab in the couch, and you're going low. The l are playing them low, and you can feel that bass, okay, but not at the other ones. The other ones, like I'm just using as a, a drum kit, Koto Drummers of Japan, you get that impact where you can know that, but the bass isn't super, super low. So I wouldn't see why Clips couldn't reproduce that. Why couldn't they reproduce it? You're only going down to about 80, 80 to 90 hertz playing those drums. Those things are six foot in diameter, and you're, that's all you're going down in, according to the CD. So uh, it'd be nice to hear what your thoughts are on it. Am I, am I looking at it completely wrong? Maybe I am. 
Maybe I'm thinking of a speaker needs to have the, the impact of the bass, and that's what we're missing. We want the impact because there's nothing on the CDs that go down below 45 hertz that I could find. And if you have a suggestion, leave it for me in the comments. I'll try to get the CD and listen to it. But uh, leave a comment. Let me know. Am I looking at this wrong? Do you really need to have a speaker going down to 20,000 hertz? And it gets class A rated. And I, I hear a lot of, except for your more seasoned audiophiles, the very seasoned ones like a stereophile or something, they will look at a speaker, let's say the Clips, the Scalas, and they'll say they go low enough. They go low enough. You know, there's no reason for a subwoofer. They found no reason to add a subwoofer to those speakers. It's the younger generation so geared to adding subwoofers to add even more and more of the rumble effect because they're so used to movies and they're not used to listening to music because there's nothing down there in the music. No CD that I have goes that low. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I just thought it was kind of funny. I thought I had to do a video on it. So until next time, this is the Empirical Audiophile. Happy listening.